What is JavaScript? What can we, what can we do with it? Yes, thank you. Okay, then I can implement some functionality for sure. Okay, what's there? In one word, there are two stories in JavaScript. Initially, in the beginning of its, of its uh, life, it has one story that it evolved into two major kind of tracks. One is on the client side, which is typically the browser. What you can do with it is manipulate this DOM tree. In one sentence, what, what, that's what you can do with JavaScript. What is this DOM tree? Uh, so, the tree of facts. The tree of facts. Okay. So when, when the HTML comes to the browser from the server, it comes as what? What is the format? As text. Okay. Strip. That's why the web is uh, really works anywhere because the exchanged messages are just text. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the browser, uh, you know, as a programmer, you can't do much with text. You can replace, maybe you can find, it, find out the link. You can do a couple of small operations with strings. You can't do too much. Mm -hmm. So, to make it more programmable, to programmable, to make the HTML page more programmable, what the browser does, the first step it does, it converts that HTML into a DOM tree. And now, Java, what you can do with JavaScript? Manipulate. What do I mean here by manipulating the DOM tree? Sorry? Maybe you can read. You can, you can select something and read from them. You can hide them. You can add some new tags. You can delete some tags. So you can basically change it the way you wish. The other thing you can do is initially, uh, so JavaScript also had kind of a revolution. Enough is enough, I don't want to stay in this browser forever. I want to come out and be more useful. Mm -hmm. So when it came out, it's a full language. You can do whatever you want. So it's just another computing language. You can use it instead of Java or C++ or any other language. So outside the browser is basically a full Full feature, fully featured language. A full language. In the browser, it has some constraints. You know, the web is very kind of. Uh, what is the word? No, no, the web in terms of security, it's very uh, vicious and a lot of kind of bad guys about them making trouble. So, the web by nature, the browser puts some constraints. So JavaScript cannot go to the, to the file system and read some files. You cannot modify files. You cannot access the network directly. There are some constraints. But when JavaScript got its freedom and it came out of the browser, it has all the features. You can read from the files, write your files, do whatever you want to do. So in here, it's full feature. But it is mainly, it is used in everywhere. But we will see it on how to build web applications on the server side using JavaScript. Okay? And here there is a famous project called Node.js. As somebody has said, open source, the benefits of open source. So in here, Chrome is an open source web browser. And the engine inside Chrome that runs JavaScript, it called, it's called V8 engine. It's just a term. It's just a name. So what this Node.js people did, it took that V8 engine, it, it basically took it out from the browser, took it outside, and add some more features to it. And it became Node.js. So here, see the open source, it gives you that opportunity. Even the creators of JavaScript did not have that idea. But because it is open source, it, it opened the door for innovation for others. Okay. And they would not just say, okay, they will, they will also always give that credit to that first open source project. So Node.js is a combination of open source projects with their own additional features. And it's a very, very powerful and very famous framework that we will see in this course. So, uh, now let me show you in very, very concrete way what I mean by manipulate law. 
and it will also show you in a very, very concrete way what I mean by this using JavaScript outside the browser uh, in Node.js. So when I speak about this, it's not just theoretical, you will see it in concrete way. So first, let me run this. Uh, this is a little page. As, uh, before you go into the scary code, first see the user experience. Always see what, what can you do with it. So you can see a very, very simple calculator. It has three inputs. So let's say you put 30. Uh, you choose the operation. Let's say times five, and you click compute. And what it did, it took the inputs and applied the operation. It gets the results and stick it on the page. Okay, this is an HTML page. As you can see here, the extension is .html. There is no server side. There is nothing on this, there is no server side. That was all happening on the client. So what do you think? Well, what, what is the algorithm? What did this page do? We got did? the input and then we changed the numbers. We compute using the operation that we also okay. get it from the list. Very good. And we display, and we display the result. Yes. So, and all of this, where is the DOM involved in it? How, how this compute implementation manipulated the DOM in this context? In this See, example. The Very good. It reads from the DOM. What did we read from the DOM in this scenario? Three things. First, input the operation, and the second operand. And then what did we do? We did some simple computation. Uh, maybe we did an if statement or a switch, maybe. Based on the operation, if it's add, if it's plus, we do addition. If it's multiply, if it's the star, we do multiplication. And so And then when we got the results, what did we do? With the results. How did we display the results? Again, we went to the DOM and we said, go there is an element on the page, go to it and we check this result. You see the idea? Yes. So here, what we do when we manipulate in the tree, we are basically reading and writing from that DOM. So we need ideas for all of them, right? Very good, yes, we will see. So, uh, so you can see here, have a look. If I do here inspect, this is an input field of type text, and it has an ID. Yes. Why did I give it an ID? To get it. So I can read directly from it. Okay? And you can see here, there's another one here, if I inspect it. Also has an ID called operation. And there is another one here, has an ID called num2. Num so anything, any element, I have intention to programmatically read from it, I go and give it an ID. So it's an easy to target it by its ID. Okay. What's the DOM? Anybody can help us? What is the DOM? It's uh, when the text is represented as a tree when uh, in the server side. It's not in the server side. It's a client side concept. Yes. So have a look at this. Here is the here is the uh, what's coming from the server side or from the page. Mm -hmm. What is this? The HTML with some with some JavaScript. It's text. It's a string. Now a string, you as a programmer, you know what you can do with string. What operations you can do with string? Maybe uh, know the length. Maybe concatenate, thank you. Maybe uh, extract. Uh, maybe you can change to uppercase, lowercase. Maybe find and replace. But that's all you can do. You can do very sophisticated. And now, this, this is fine, it could, yes. it could work. But with JavaScript, we want to do much more than, than this, than what string can give us as a, as a data structure. That's why you study data structures. Mm -hmm. So data structures give you some kind of uh, abstraction or some, um, how can I say, some mechanisms that you can program. So that's why one of the, what, the, what the browser does the first thing it does, when it gets this string, what it does to it? It changes it to a DOM to, to, to a tree, to a DOM tree. Okay? Something similar to this, have a look. Uh, but programmatically accessible, you can manipulate it using a program. Something like, if I do here inspect, you can see already the browser, this is already, it knows it is a tree. You can see it's expandable. Yes. Okay? Here. 
you can drill down into each subtree and see what's in there. This is a form, these are inputs, select, these are, these are the options in the select. So it is a tree. Both in here is just a visualization of that tree. But you can access it and, and change it programmatically using JavaScript. Mm -hmm. It's clear the idea of a tree. So to be able to program it, to program the page, you, the browser converts it to this tree data, data structure. And that tree data structure, instead of saying the tree data structure that represents the HTML page, what the, what the web people call it, that tree, no. the no. tree that represents the HTML page, the, doc, the document object model. Okay? And this turns very different. So make sure you know it because you cannot call yourself a web developer if you don't, if you don't know what the problem is. It's a very simple concept. It's clear? Now, now let me welcome to uh, JavaScript and let me show you what I mean when I say I read and I write from the tree. Very, very simple. So JavaScript, when it is in the browser, when it is in the browser, it gives you some built-in objects. Some objects are already there. Just use them. You don't even think about them. The browser will create them for you. One of these built-in objects is called a document. Have a look at it. It's a document. It's an object. Same concept of object you already know in other courses. It's an object. It has methods. Lots of methods. Don't worry. We don't care about all of them. We will see some of them. The 20, thank you. Not even the 20. The 20% for the 80%. Very good. Yes. Now, you can see this tree. The whole document is represented in this object called document. And then if, if I want to read the first number, what do I do? I just say, document, please give me the elements by ID not one. I don't want the whole element. I just want the value. I don't want the color of that element or the width or the length or whatever it is. I want the value. And then I go here and say, go to this element called num2 and read its value. And then I put them into these two variables, num1 and num2. And then I want and then read the operation. This will be the plus, the minus, and so on. And here, I want and read the whole element called results. In here, I didn't ask for the value. I asked for the whole node, the whole element. Okay? And then, now, I, I have a calculator object. We will see the object-oriented story in JavaScript. But you're already familiar with the concept of a class and an object. So I have a class called calculator. I'm creating an instance of it. I'm putting it in this object called calculator. And then this is a familiar switch. Copy, paste from C++, Java. And the Java people copy this from C++ and so Here there is, you cannot invent something new. All languages have this if else, the concept of variables, the concept of loops, switch. Here, no difference. So in here, it says, based on the operation, if it's plus, I want you to go and do the addition. Mm -hmm. If it's minus, I want you to go and do the subtraction. And so And then, put the result in the variable called the result. And then, at the end, I want you to go to that element I read above, called the result div. I want you to stick this HTML into that element. So I construct a string. It says, I asked me to do this operation on num1, num1, and num2, and this is the result. Okay. So I get that string. What do I do with that string? I insert it into this element. Have a look. There is an element called result. Is there anything in that result? No. It's empty in the beginning. So I come at a runtime and put that result, I put it in here, the result is inserted in. This is what it means by manipulating the DOM tree. I'm reading, doing some work, and putting it back in the tree. Dr. Descript will be always written here. Okay, now the, the location, the, this is the for demo purposes. Okay. I write it here. But for realistically, you should put it in a separate file. Same as CSS, separate file with the extension .js, and then you link it into the page. This time, they change their mind, it's not no longer the link tag, it's called script tag, because this is a script. And then you put the source, 
from where it's coming. Okay. Okay, it's even more meaningful. Because maybe these are more programmers who came up with this mm -hmm. app. More meaningful than the other. About the, the data type of the challenge, it's, it's no, that's, it's, this is number, this is string, this is string. Okay, very good. Uh, we will come. Yeah. You want to jump the steps. Okay, is the idea clear? Yes. Of what it means by DOM tree? Yes. Okay, very good. We will come now to this concept. So, first of all, what I want to say, whatever you know from other languages, you will find it here. First of all. Okay. And then, we will dive deeper into what is specific. To JavaScript. Okay? So, and that specific features, that's what be JavaScript, its own identity and its own power. power. So, now, as you notice, thank you, as you notice, when I declare variables in JavaScript, I don't put the data type. What do I do? I just declare them using the keyword var. Okay? Or even better, this is an old way of doing it. I have to update myself. The new way of doing it, you have to use the keyword let's. And I will explain the differences and so on. But it's fine. Var is also fine. Okay, so there's no data type when I declare the variables. Does that mean the system is typeless? It does not know the concept of the data type? No, he knows. It does. But how does it know? From the operation. From? The operation. Not from the operation. From? Um, I heard it. From, from the value, from the concept. From what you put on the variable, the system will work out the time. Okay? It says you don't need to tell me yes. the time. I can work it out myself. Okay? So this is called, in, in programming languages, we call them loosely typed. It's not typeless, it is loosely typed. You don't need to specify the type. It is implicit. Another word for it is implicitly typed. Not explicit. You know, Java is very explicit. It says, this is a string, this is a chart, this is a float, this is an integer. In here, it's not explicit. It is implicit. Okay, what I mean by this, let me show you. Now I have to welcome you to the other part, which is this part, outside the browser, where JavaScript took its freedom, and now it's outside. And embedded in this open source. Uh, open source framework called Node.js, which is kind of not that, maybe not that famous. So let me see. Node.js. Uh, let me see. It's just 32 million people has written about it. It's not, not that. Uh, with different variations, maybe it's even more. Okay. So it's very, very, very famous framework out there. You just download it, it has JavaScript built in into it. When you install it, what you can do is, you know the command line, this scary black screen? Yeah. Or, uh, anyway, I'll go for less scary one, which is the blue one. This, either one. Both of them are command line interfaces. Command line means you have to type. You cannot just click, click, click. You type. It's a command line interface. So all you do, you do node, node. So Node.js, when you install it, it has a program called Node. And that is basically an engine that understands JavaScript. You throw it in JavaScript, and it, it can run. But remember, JavaScript is not a compiled language. You don't compile it. Just take the source and throw it at the client. The client will go through it, so line by line, and interpret it. Interpret it. There is no compiled step, like in C++ or Java. OK, so here is Node. Here is a full JavaScript engine. So I can do something as simple as 9 times 8. It's understanding what it means. Okay. Or I can declare variables. Var, var x equal 10. I declare the variable. I can ask for it. It's 10. I can, what, what's the type you think? What is the type of x? It's integer. It's a number. So in JavaScript, there is a type. But do you specify type as a program? No, it's implicit. Implicitly typed. Now, the other thing you can do, which is not very good, but you can do it if you wish. You can put, change your mind and put a different type. If you do this in Java, it, it will shout at you, saying, this is a number, you cannot put a string. In here, there is no, you have the freedom. But you, you take the, when you have freedom, of course, you have 
and responsibility associated with it. It's up to you, but, but you have to know what you're doing. JavaScript, no problem. You change your mind, I also accommodate your change of mind. No problem. And the type now is string. So JavaScript is a loosely typed, and also it's called a dynamic language. What do I mean by dynamic? You can change the type. You can change the type if you wish at a runtime. time. While Java is a static language, if you declare a variable as integer, you cannot change your run along the way. Oh, no, sorry, I want to make it a set. You cannot do it. You have to go back, change the program, and recompile it, and make sure it works at the you, you get the idea. Now, have a look at this, although we will see this in more details. So the, the, the major data types we have are number, string, boolean, objects, and some other weird data types that I will see, we will see later. Let's not confuse you with it. Let me now see another, another type, which is the boolean, like let's say is, okay, all right. Uh, and I'll say true, all right? And basically, if I say, yeah, sorry, I changed Arabic now. Uh, true. When you put the equality, it's always going to tell you undefined, or? No, I will explain this. Don't worry about it. Okay. I, I will explain this later on. Don't worry about it. Now, if I say uh, type of, type of, is it's boolean okay the last type i will show you don't be too scared we will see it later on let's say uh, let's say student uh, and i create an object i can create an object on the fly this is another power very very powerful feature of javascript in in, in java or c++ before you create an object what should you do yes class and based on that class, what you do is create an instance. In JavaScript, you can do that if you wish, but you can also create an object on the fly without a class first. So here, I, here is how I create an object. Just declare it like any other object, open your curly braces, and start defining what, what the object is. So in here, I put here first name, e, uh, not equal, column. And then I put here and then I'll come and say last name. Okay, something like this. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, I didn't like what I did. All right, no problem. Let me bring it back. It's not called equal, it's column. So it should be name, column, value. It's a name value pair. Name, column, value. Name, column, value inside curly brace. Okay? This is an object. And this object is student, and I can say student dot last, last name. It, goes, it gives me the last name. If I do student dot first name, it gives me the first name. I can add methods, I can do all what I want to do, create an object on the fly. This is what it means by. This is the, the fruit of being a loosely typed language. You don't have to have a type. You can create an object on the fly. Okay? So, this is the basic idea. So here, what I want, you've seen here many, many things as we speak. Mm -hmm. You've seen JavaScript in the browser, and the key role it does is manipulate the function. As we go deeper, you will see we will use JavaScript to go to the server side, get some data, and change the top. Mm -hmm. Or pick up some data from the DOM and push it to the server side. We will see how to do this in JavaScript. But the key idea at the end of the day, what you're doing on the client side, on, on the browser, manipulating the top tree. Okay. You, you can see some fancy animation on the page. Uh, you can see some, uh, like for example, when you click, when you, when you delete a row in a table, it kind of disappears slowly or something like this, of that nature. That is only JavaScript. It goes and changes some of the properties of that element. It's all about reading and writing and changing the properties of the elements in the DOM tree. On the, on, outside the browser, it is basically 
uh, a full-fledged, a full-featured language, you can do whatever you want to do with it. Okay, is clear? Now, now the slides. Let's go through and just, I will go through them very, very quickly uh, because uh, maybe they are already here. All right. Because most of this stuff that I show you here, you already know it. So I will only stop the things that are specific to JavaScript. And we will really go into the specifics, inshallah, for the next session. Okay. All right. Okay, good. Now, uh, this is the content. So, introducing JavaScript, which I kind of introduced already. We'll see data types. We already kind of seen most of them. Operators, all the uh, mathematical operations that you know from Java, the comparison operators, they're all there. Conditional, the if else, and the switch, it's there. Loops are all there. But JavaScript has its, has its own flavors of loops. That's where we will focus on. And then arrays, and you will see arrays and functions. Okay? And then after this foundation, this is the foundation, after it we will dive into more specific features to show you the power of the, of the language. Now, before I move, sorry, before I move, there is one more thing I didn't mention, which is very, very important. Now, how, what is the connection between the JavaScript and the HTML? How, when does the JavaScript, JavaScript get gets executed in most cases? One more. Very good. In general, in general, you do you write JavaScript as a set of functions. When do you call these functions? Sorry. Okay. When an event happens. Thank you. When when the user interacts with the page, let's say the user clicks a button, or maybe they change the value of a dropdown, or maybe they change the value on a, a, a text box. Or they just moved the mouse, did anything. The browser will fire an event, you raise an event. And then you as a programmer, you listen to those events, and then you handle the event. Okay. So similar concept to Swing. You know all kinds of Swing. But not as scale as Swing. They're super simple, you will see. Okay. So that, that is the idea. On the client side, a very simple programming model. Create functions and classes and objects, and then Start listening to events of interest. Which event interests you as a developer to give a good experience to your users? Listen to those events, and when they happen, call the appropriate function. That is the programming model. Okay. Is clear? Uh, now, on the server side, here your imagination is the limit. Maybe you have a set of files that you want to manipulate, or create files, or read the rights from a database send some file through the network, whatever you want to do. It's a full language. You can do whatever you want to do with it. Okay, so let me now go back to this. All right, let's, let's go for it. So, so you might see some people still talking about JavaScript being a client-side language. It's no longer just a client -side. You can also do server-side using this uh, Node.js framework. So, um, I kind of already explained this. One more thing I want to say is it supports both, both styles of programming. A functional style, where your program is made up of functions, yes. and object-oriented style, where you create objects, and your program is set of objects. Usually, it's both, a, man, a combination of both. Um, now, this guy is not showing properly. Um, go away. All right. Now, JavaScript came through a, lot, a big evolution. Um, I didn't go through the history, I didn't put here the history, but if you are interested, you can look it up. Uh, the latest version is 2015. The latest version, that is uh, agreed upon. So there is, you can think of it, there is some kind of JavaScript parliament, and people put proposals. Please add this feature. 
why, why don't you add this? Why don't you consider extending the language using this? So experts, not everyone, experts and companies, they come and say, here is this feature, we have studied it, here is a proof, proof of concept. Think about it, study it. If you think it's useful, add it to the language. So, because JavaScript is becoming more and more popular, now almost every year now we see a new version. Why? Before it was like a couple of years, five, six years before you see the new version. So the latest one is, uh, is 2015. And the reason why it's called ECMAS, ECMAS script, this is, the, this is like the community or kind of the, the JavaScript parliament. This is the committee that makes decisions about JavaScript. So they make decisions and then the browsers catch up on those decisions and implement them. Okay? So most of the features of, of 2015, most of them are now implemented. Mm -hmm. But some browsers are still catching up. So that's the good news for us as developers, we always use the latest feature, but we can compile it to the previous version if you want. Mm -hmm. It's not compiling, we kind of translate it to the previous version. So we can still support the old browsers that, that are taking their time to catch up. But we don't need to wait for them to catch up. Mm -hmm. What we do as developers, because we always want to the latest because it's most likely easier, it gives you more power at your hands. But when you when you want to deploy it and give it to your client to run, you, you translate it to the old version. Mm -hmm. This is the power of this. So of course they are not sleeping, they are working on 2016. So by the time we might see some of the features, 2016 features in this course. But the good news, this is very important to keep in your mind, the good news you can, cut, you can always use the latest and translate to the previous version. Okay? And that's what we will see heavily in this course. So we will not write the previous, you will see a lot of stuff on the web, some of it old, some of it new. We will try to use the new version, the new features. Okay? And that's why even in these slides you will see some features that are brought along 2015 is a major version, a major shift. Because suddenly this language became so important, and suddenly they wake up. This, this committee was sleeping, enjoying life, and then when they saw, Ooh, let's, wake. Let's, let's wake up and do something. And then they say now, ha, we waked up, and every year we will give you a new version. That's why they changed the version in numbering. They used to call it Java 1, 1.2, 1.3, and then between 1, between 1 and 1.2, maybe 4, 3, 4 years, 5 years. But now they say, oh, no longer that, that will not work for us. We will go to a versioning based on the year. And every year, new version. Okay. All right, that's it. Let's move on. What you can do with it. This is very important. Any technology, before you dive deeper into it, ask yourself, what can you do with it? You might not know how to do it, but at least you are aware of what you can do with it. This is in a very uh, straightforward way. Of course, we already summarized all of this in one sentence. Manipulate your dog show. But a little bit more details. Uh, you can handle client-side events. When, when some events happen on the browser, you can handle it. You can write some code to handle it. Of course, manipulate the DOM tree. We mean by manipulate, read, modify, and delete. Elements. You can validate the form data. This is very important. When you have a form, don't trust your users. They might not have cooked their breakfast, or might not have a very good start of the day. They might be putting whatever, or they might want to challenge your program. They don't like it, they want to crush it, so they try to put whatever. So you need to validate. Make sure that validation means. You make sure the data is within a valid range. If somebody asks for age, don't allow them a negative or don't allow them 1,000 years age, if you are talking about some human age. Okay, you can perform computations such as sorting, animation. Uh, you can perform asynchronous server calls. Don't worry about like Chinese stuff at this stage, but we will see what it means as we move forward. You can write server-side code, server-side logic. Some of you were complaining, wow, what we will do in this uh, form that we are using in the assignment? Where do we get the data from? We want to get it from the server, from some files or some database. 
you are Russian. And don't worry about it, we'll see how to do it later. Okay. For now, just put the data, imagine some data and write it on the page. Okay. The purpose of the assignment is to show to your users, is this what you mean? Is this how you expect the page to look like? Uh, okay, and then you will move on and, and get the data from a real server side or whatever. And we will see how to do this using JavaScript. Is it clear what you can do with it? Of course, in here I can add your imagination is the limit when you take JavaScript outside the browser. It's a full language. You do whatever you want to do with it. Okay, here. Anyway, this is if you want to show an alert. Uh, alert. Don't do this, please. Users hate it. Even the browsers, if you give too many alerts to browsers, can I, should I prevent this application from annoying the users? Have you seen this? So, we don't use alerts. Just forget it. Uh, all right. Now, where do we put the JavaScript? The best way, of course, is to put it in a separate file. And the best way is to put it in a separate folder. Let's say, slash js, slash your files with the .js extension. Mm -hmm. And then, you, you, you basically uh, kind of import the JavaScript to the HTML page using the script type. Mm -hmm. Script, source, and you specify the path. But if you insist, you can always put script, script tag in the head and put your code in there. Mm -hmm. But if you are just experimenting until, until you, are, you are just developing something, you don't want to switch between JS file and HTML file, you can put it initially, if you wish, on the script tag, and then when you, once you are comfortable, cut it and put it in the external file, and then link the two using the script tag. Mm -hmm. But definitely, before you submit or you make it live, you should, you should not leave the script in, inside your HTML. All right, so here is the idea. The, I, I already explained it. So the way, the way you do it, you create, you typically create a function. Mm -hmm. Typically create a function. And these functions do some work. And then the, in, in the HTML, you, you listen to certain events. And when these events happen, you call the function to react to that event. Mm -hmm. For example, in here, what do I have? Okay. I have an image. Tag. See here, it's op I open the tag. This is the image that I will see on the browser. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this is an event. Mm -hmm. Say on click equals the name of the function and I pass yeah. parameters to it. Mm -hmm. You see here, one more difference. Function, by the way, here's how what a JavaScript function look like, looks like. It just basically puts the keyword function, yes. followed by name, yes. followed by the parameters. Yes. Except here, you don't, want, you don't need to waste your, your time or, or deciding the type. Type is a type, list. don't put the any type, just put the name of the parameter. And then here I'm just alerting, showing it to the, brand, to the user in a, in a box, in a message box. Okay? So it's clear what's going on here. This is an element on the page. When it's clicked, I call the function that so, I defined previously. So you report the events? Sorry? In brackets? No, no. Uh, here is the events I am listening to. Okay. And I put equal. And here is a function call. This is a function definition. And this is a function call. What I am calling? I am calling a function called test. And what is this flipped? It's a part. So, to where, this is one way. This is, uh, what can I say? Whatever I tell you today, don't use it, right? <laughs> we will see a much more sophisticated way of doing it. Okay. But I, we cannot jump to that before we get the basic idea. Okay. So the basic idea is, we have some elements on the page. That element has some event, can fire some event. Listen to them, and when they happen, Call the function that you like and give its parameters that you wish. Think it's clear? Yes. Yeah, okay. Now the uh, the syntax in the in the surface it looks like any other language on the surface, but as you go deeper, it has its own identity, and its own uh, its own uh, 
specific features. But on the surface, you have the concept. These, these concepts, halas, you have the foundation of program. If you don't have the foundation, JavaScript, we need to cover it in half of the semester and the whole semester. But because you have the foundation, we will build on those foundations and move forward. Okay. So those foundations, you've already seen them and practiced them and you already know them. So concept of a variable where you put some data to hold, to hold your input or to hold your output. You have operations that you can do with these variables. You have, not, the, the life is not always straight line. Sometimes based on some conditions, you take right or left, or you, you take, there are different paths. And then, sometimes it's not, you do it once and you achieve your goal. You have to keep repeating, okay? And then, uh, sometimes you deal with one value, and many times you deal with multiple values that you want to store as one unit. This is the concept of array, you already see it. And then your, your program, if you keep just writing with that divided, it would stretch and become too long and too complex and too scary. So what you do, you, you, you make it modular, either using functions or classes. So you're already familiar with this concept, even the syntax is very, very similar. So here is the first thing, the data types. Data types, if you see var, if you see var from these previous examples, please don't use var. Okay? Var is an old version of JavaScript. To declare a variable, what you use, what is the best way to declare a variable, is let. And I will explain the difference between the two. You can still use var, of course. You can still use var, but better to use let. And I will explain why. So, the syntax is very, very similar to what you have seen. Except you don't specify the data type. Just put the let put the variable and initialize it if you wish. So here is the height variable and I initialize it with 200. Okay. Here is the difference. Here is the difference between var and let. Okay. Var, var, if you declare a variable, it's visible. if you declare a variable even inside the loop with the keyword var, it will be visible everywhere. So let allows you to do block level variable. Remember the concept of scope. Yes. Those, those are foundations. No, I yes. already know. Yes. So before version 2015, before JavaScript 2015, JavaScript did not have a block level scope. You, you only have file level scope and function scope. You don't have block scope. Now, if you put let, you see here what I'm doing, by the way, this is a loop, and it's kind of a bit special loop. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing here, I'm doing, this is an array, this is how I declare an array. Just open your square brackets, put the value separated by count. I'm here looping through each value in this array. And then I'm displaying it to the console. The console is this one. Here is the console. Is I can, I think, do control shift C, I think. Or I can do inspect. And I go to this console here. This console is a full, by the way, first of all, this console is a full JavaScript engine. You can declare, you can do whatever here. That's another calculator. If you forget your calculator one day, just go to the console and do Okay. You can, this is a JavaScript engine behind here. So I can declare a variable x10, okay, and then I'll say x is 10. I can do type of x is number. So here is a similar, you see here the JavaScript lives inside the browser and also lives outside. You've seen both. Okay. Now, in here I can, I, if I am on the page, if I am on the page, uh, let's do it. So I just show you very quickly. In here, I want to do two things. I want to display it on the page, and I also want to display it on the console. Dot log, and I put the results. Usually when I use the console, is it for the users? No. For the developers, when you are debugging. Yes. When you want to see, it, I put what code is, is correct, yes. but I'm not getting the expected results. Yes. You can insert some console.log yes. in your code, so you can kind of trace. 
Although you can, you can also debug and go step by step and see the code running one line at a time. You will see this later. But for now, if I do this, and let me see, let me run this. And let me open my inspector and go to the console. So if I put here 10, and here is 5, and a compute. So I get my result here, and I get it here yeah. on the console. So console.log is just a way of taking some values and putting them in the, uh, in the console. Okay. All right. So now uh, we are almost there. So here it is, here it is, here it is. OK, so here, if I take this, by the way, the good thing is you can copy the code, put it in, in, either in Node.js in the, in the uh, command line or in the console in the browser and try it out. The other thing you can do, you can even come here in the, in the uh, web store, you open the project and you can just right click and run. Here. Okay. You can right click and run. And when you run it, what is it? What is it using to run it? The node, the node JS. So most of the examples before, I, I used to have them inside the page, and you have to create a page and then put the JavaScript on the page. Now you don't need to. JavaScript kind of run on its own as a standalone program. Mm -hmm. So you can either copy the code. Let's say I can copy this. I can go to the browser and paste it here, run, and you get the results. Or you can run it from the command line, or you can run it from WebStorm, or you can take that code and put it in a page and run it. It's all the same. So it's a, it's a truly uh, platform independent, and JavaScript exists everywhere. Um, of course, on the mobile devices everywhere. It's a really, truly platform independent. OK, one minute left. Okay. Uh, so in here, in, as I explained, if I try to access member after this loop, I will get an exception. Because this is only visible in this scope. If I put var, then number will be visible after the loop. So that's why you want to use let. Because let allows you to do block level, block level scope. But you will find on the web 95% are using var. Because that's what people use to do. But now, since there is a new, better way, we have to adopt the new, better way. Since you are a new developer in JavaScript, please don't use bar. Use less. Okay? That's it, right?